Hi, this is Jerry with VLScripts.com. Thanks for joining us. Today, I'm going to show you the difference between using normalization to make something louder and using compression to make something louder. Overall, if you record properly and compress, you don't actually need to use normalization in your recording. Now, if you're sending your recording off to an editor, you don't even have to worry about this step. Just record proper levels and send the file. If you're editing your own stuff, you're gonna wanna pay attention. All right, let's begin. So to start off here, I recorded a file. I'm gonna actually throw my headphones on here real quick so I don't feed back. And I recorded a file of myself here and I'm just recording this from home today because you know, it's Corona season. And uh, so just to give you a sense of what I recorded, there's gonna be some background noise in this recording. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says you need this. So it's uh, not a horrible recording by any means, but it is a little bit low in volume. And in fact, if we pull up, well, I have it right here, this gain plugin right in Pro Tools, I can analyze what the overall gain is. And right now it's showing me a peak level of 11, minus 11.6 dB and an RMS or an average level of minus 34.7. Well, that's pretty low to record. Typically, we usually record around minus 27 dB. That's where our average level is sitting to record. And that actually still gives us plenty of headroom to avoid distortion. However, let's say this is edited. Actually, it is edited. And we want to normalize that volume. Well, let's, we don't want to use RMS normalization. We want to use peak normalization. Because if we use RMS or normalization, chances are we're going to end up distorting the signal. So let's go ahead, click on peak, and we can see that we have 11.6 dB to go until we reach full scale digital uh, and clipping. So we're just gonna go ahead and move this gain slider up. And you can see right here what our resultant uh, gain is. So right on the left here, on the right here rather, we're seeing 20.3, so we're just gonna go, actually it's probably easier just to look at the result. Oh, that's right, I can't click in Pro Tools. And this, I'm going to slowly bring this down to a normalization of minus 1.0. And you may be wondering why that is. Well, when you convert MP3s a lot of times, and when you can uh, normalize to zero dB full scale, you end up getting some distortion and getting some uh, artifacting in your file. So it's a good idea not to normalize the full zero, but rather minus one decibels. So, all right, so we're just gonna go ahead, hit render. And you can see by looking at that file that we went, I'm gonna undo it and then redo it. And we can see that that gain is significantly louder. Now, if I analyze this again, remap that back to zero, analyze, it's gonna show a level of minus 1.0 dB peak and an RMS level of minus 24.1. Now, we can actually make that even louder. So if I were to play that right now, this is as loud as it's gonna get before it reaches distortion. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says, you need this, you want this, you can't resist this, you must buy. So as you can see, uh, it's looking at our meters, our Duro meters. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy. It's reading about average about minus 24 dB. Now that's fine for broadcast television because they're loudness specs. However, for radio and for internet streaming and for even corporate media, you're gonna want to have that much louder. So in order to get that louder, we're going to use a combination of compression. And what that's going to do is it's going to take these peaks right in here and it's gonna squash them. So let's go ahead and instantiate a compressor on our channel. We already have one here. I'm going to just pull up the Oxford Dynamics because I already have it in. It's a great Dynamics plugin, by the way, if anyone has it. Uh, and we're going to set that threshold. Let me just result. So we'll, we'll step through these. I'm going to set that threshold at around, I instantiate the compressor module, and it's right around minus 19 dB. Now, what's a beauty about this compressor is that you can see over here, the signal rise and the slope. 
if I can change that threshold even lower, you can see that it's that what's going to happen is the audio is going to start to compress at a much lower signal. Right now, it's going to start compressing at minus 47 dB. So once the signal passes that threshold, it's going to start pushing it down in volume. And while that's what we want, we don't want it to start at such a low volume. So let me jump back to about minus 18, minus 19, wherever I was. And I'm going to do a light compression here. Uh, well, not super light, but in about three to three to, let's just go four to one. That's pretty standard compression. You can dial it in here pretty tightly, but, and, and I'm also going to change my knee. Now, here's the interesting thing. When you look at this little ledge right here where my uh, pointer is pointing, if I hit the compressor knee, what that does is change how quickly or how gradually the signal responds to the compression input. Go back to zero. You can see it's a fairly tight start point. If I hit the knee, it's just a little bit more gradual. And for this particular compressor, I usually use 10 to 15 dB of uh, co compressor knee. And some compressors have this function and other compressors do not. Very simple compressors where you, you basically just increase the threshold. Those are called over easy compressors. And those are very valid compressors. In fact, they have a great compressor that is not very expensive at all. It's called, the, it's uh, made by Klanghelm. And it's called the DC-83. Now, this is not an over easy compressor, but it is fairly simple to understand. So if I, let me turn off the uh, Oxford compressor. If I uh, set my threshold up a little higher, the advertising voiceover, and actually instantiate it on the correct channel. There we go. The advertising voiceover. That disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy. You're going to see this gain reduction right here. And that's going to be based on a couple things. The ratio, the threshold, which is the input, so to speak, the start of where it, it's going to start compressing. The ratio, how much it's going to compress. The attack, how quickly it's going to compress. And the release, how quickly it's going to release or let go of that compression. Now, another... Uh, thing here we have, another dial we have here is the mix, uh, mix dial. And sometimes you see that on, on compressors, sometimes you don't. We're going to go full wet. Sometimes if you, sometimes I will dial this back a little bit. That's called parallel compression, where you're getting some of the uh, un uncompressed signal mixed in with the compressed signal. And that makes it seem like it gives you a little bit more dynamics, but it still gives you control, uh, a lot of control, and it sounds a lot more natural sometimes. So, uh, however, for our purposes, I'm going to put this all the way up to wet. And then this particular compressor has an automatic gain control. And we're going to set that to 0 dB. So we're not increasing the gain at all yet. However, what we're trying to do is squash the peaks, make, those, make the peaks quieter, and then we're going to increase the overall gain of the signal, making it sound louder. So let's go ahead and do that. I might as well just stick with this compressor since it's on the correct channel now. So we're gonna hit, hit play here. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy. buy and you buy. can see right now, it says you need this. It's you peaking want this. minus two you to minus three, this. minus three on the you peaks. Must buy. And well, you're inclined to agree because you enjoy the crisp blend and punch of a hard cider infusion. And that doesn't sound overly compressed at all. Let me bypass that, and we'll hear it without the compression. The advertising voiceover. That disembodied voice telling you when... Now, you can really hear how much the compression is kicking in right on the first few words. The advertising voiceover. It's really peaking on advertising. If I put the compressor in, notice how quiet it is. The advertising voiceover. That disembodied voice. Now, one thing I didn't mention is as we're compressing it, I can see that it's reducing at 6 dB, but I'm not changing the output gain at all. So basically what I want to do is as I look at the output gain, or what rather the compression reduction, I'm going to increase the output gain accordingly. And what that's doing is bringing up the overall volume. And that means the low signals the signals that aren't being reduced by the compressor. 
they are being increased in volume and it increases the apparent loudness of the signal. Thus, it sounds louder. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy. Now that might be a little bit too much because I heard some distortion. Um, I may actually add just a little bit more compression and dial that attack back down. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says you need this. Now that sounds pretty good to me. Now, remember, we've got a signal here. We've already boosted the gain to normalization. So let me play that. And this is without the compressor, so I'm going to bypass my compressor. And this is the volume of it, fully normalized, or one decibel below for norm full normalization. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says, you need this. You want this. You can't resist this. Okay, so that doesn't sound bad, but what you're going to hear with the compressor is you see these peaks here. Those are going to get squashed a little bit more and make it even with this lower part here. And then what's gonna happen is we're gonna end up boosting the gain overall. So let's turn that compressor back on and you'll notice how loud, how much louder it is. Resist this. Oop, let me start at the beginning. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says, you need this. You want this. You can't resist this. You must buy. And, well, you're inclined to agree, because you enjoy the crisp blend and punch. So you can hear that difference. Let me shut the compressor off again. This is with a no compressor and only normalized to minus one. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. And with compressor and additional gain. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. So um, what we're hearing here, if we look at our meters, let's pull up this Duro meter here. There it is. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. And I'm still hearing some distortion. I might have actually recorded it that way, but. Uh, the advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy you can see that our average level is a little bit hotter. Now we're looking at a, a VU meter or a specialized VU meter. Let's look at a loudness meter. So this is a loudness meter from Nugent and it is a, uh, uses sort of a different method of measuring loudness or how, well, the volume, how loud something is. So let's go ahead and hit that. And actually let's bypass the compression the advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says, you need this. And what you we want to look want at here this. is the integrated you can't resist level. This. You must buy. And well, you're inclined to agree because you enjoy the crisp blend and punch of a hard cider infusion. And no one should take that away from you. So the uh, average or the integrated level volume wise, loudness wise, of this piece of audio without compression is minus 24. Again, that's fine for broadcast. However, let's say we want to put this out to a radio spot. So let's go ahead and hit play. I've turned on the compressor again. I'm going to clear our numbers and let's hit play again. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says you need this. You want this. You can't resist this. You must buy. And, well, you're inclined to agree. Because you enjoy the crisp blend and punch of a hard cider infusion. And no one should take that away from you. So, there you go. There you see that our integrated level is actually four decibels louder. And we're still not hitting peak distortion. Four decibels louder over just straight normalization. And look at that. Look at what our gain structure is. Just a shy, just a hair above four decibels louder. Now, to make this even louder, we can actually stack another compressor on top of that. And we're going to stack 
a limiting compressor on top of that. We'll, we'll use the L1 from Waves. It's a pretty popular compressor. It sounds pretty good. Uh, it can get a little boxy at times, but you know, it's a it's a really nice compressor. The other one I actually use a lot. Uh, a lot of people don't use it. I've been using it for years. It's one of my has been one of my perennial favorites. It's by Massey. It's called the Massey L2007. Probably the year it came out. I don't even know. Now this is a perfect example of an over easy compressor, and that's what you'll find a lot of times with limiting compressors. And the L1 is also so. The way this works is you basically just the advertise take your threshold level and turn it down and it's going to automatically boost the gain. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says you need this. You want this. You can't. So you can hear that's got uh, significantly louder and buy. Now I can go nuts and even increase that more. The advertising voiceover. And you can hear the result of that. Once you start to really hit compression, it brings out the distortion quickly. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says you need this. You now you can see based on our meters here, this integrated meter, let me clear that out, that that's a huge jump in level. That's a minus 15 LKFS or LUFS volume. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says you need this. You want that is pretty loud. Uh, I, I, it's extremely rare that I ever put anything out that loud. So I'm going to dial this back, get back to the distortion. At most, I'm putting things out minus 14, minus 15. YouTube, YouTube spec, sort of unpublished, is about minus 16 LKFS. What normalization does is it brings up the overall volume of a signal, usually to minus zero. Uh, traditionally, but you can change it now to minus one, minus two, really whatever you want your maximum peak to be. However, to create even greater loudness, you're going to want to use a compressor. So, uh, and that helps squash those peaks. It takes, it basically takes these peaks at the top here. It pushes them down, but pushes the quieter bits up in volume. So again, real quick, with compression, or rather without any compression, and normalized to zero, minus zero dB, full scale. Oh. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says, you need this, you want this, you can't resist this, you must buy. And well, you're inclined to agree. So again, minus 23, minus 24 dB is where we're usually sitting in with that. So turning on the compressors. The advertising voiceover, that disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. Again, significantly louder. So when you're sending a signal out or sending a, a project file out, uh, instead of using peak normalization, try to use compression. I don't actually even normally normalize at all, even when I'm using a compressor, I just boost the gain overall with the output gain of the compressor. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking constantly at LKFS meters and VU and peak meters to make sure I'm not running into distortion. And of course, using my ears as well. So um, keep that in mind when you're sending files. And I hope you found this useful. Take care. The advertising voiceover. That disembodied voice telling you when and what to buy, buy, buy. It says, you need this. You want this. You can't resist this. You must buy. And, well, you're inclined to agree. Because you enjoy the crisp blend and punch of a hard cider infusion. And if they complain you drank it all, you can tell them the dog drank it. Alibi hard ciders. Doggone good.